Welcome, everyone. Dr. Mandel with you. Uh, we are streaming live. Uh, today's topic is 10 surprising ways your body's warning you to drink more water. Now, we are composed of a lot of water, the human body, and it is so important uh, that we stay hydrated, uh, realizing that the majority of my followers have pain. That's key. That is really key that water is one of the primary substances within the discs, keeps the discs nice and thick and hydrated. So we cannot afford to be dehydrated because it's going to affect the height of our spine as well as our healing uh, muscles, uh, blood are all composed of fluids. And these fluids are extremely important. So let's go into our first one. Um, I'll be hiding my face uh, for a little bit, but I'll go through these real quick because these are going to cover the full screen, just the pictures as I go through them real quick. Uh, the first guy here, and the number one guy here, uh, this guy looks like he has a hard time sleeping. We realize that uh, sleeping is so important. One third of our life is sleeping. And if we're not getting the proper sleep, our cells are not repairing. And the problem with this is that as we become dehydrated, many of you will wake up fatigued. Uh, just like, uh, you know, when you drink and you drink, you go to bed, your body's dehydrated. Well, what? You wake up with hangovers. That means you're uh, affecting many things. You're the regulation of blood pressure. You're affecting the lack of oxygen that slows down to the muscles and the nerve function, which obviously will make you feel drowsy, make you feel extremely tired. Uh, but to, very important, make sure you are definitely hydrating before you sleep because of the fact uh, that when you don't hydrate, um, it has a lot of neurological functions, believe it or not. But the, the key thing is when you're sleeping, your body is dehydrating over time because remember, your basal metabolic rate and your cells and everything in your system is working through energy and energy requires water. Okay, so uh, you are losing fluid just sleeping. That's so important. So you need to make sure you're hydrated. Okay, let's go here to the dry mouth. Uh, I had this condition. I actually went to a dermatologist many years back, and this was an issue, not because uh, I didn't drink uh, a lot, but I didn't drink enough. Uh, I was, uh, this was during the summertime when uh, I did a lot of boating out in the heat, and even though I was thirsty, I would drink, but I still wasn't drinking enough. Uh, but the lips are a big indicator. So if you notice you're getting a lot of uh, even swelling, dryness, even on your tongue, uh, this can be a really big indicator of, of dehydration. So this is just a key because a lot of people go out and they will go out and get the chapstick and use this kind of stuff, but it's not going to solve the causation of the problem. Muscle cramps, very, very common, particularly in heated weather. Uh, people that work outside, people that do construction work. Uh, and obviously this can be a lack of electrolytes, but most of the time it's dehydration of water water. So uh, if you are in the heat or you are doing extra work or extra exercise, even aerobic exercise, you may want to bump it up uh, five to 10 ounces of fluid for every 20 minutes of exercise you do. So if you are walking treadmills, you may want to keep a little water bottle next to you. It does make a big difference. Okay. I'm going to talk about a few things about how much water we should be taking in at the end of this, but we're moving pretty good here. Uh, this is what we call the old sagging skin test. Now, here's a little test you can do. If you are dehydrated, it's going to affect the skin's elasticity, and drinking water will definitely help improve the look and the feel of your skin. Now, there are many factors in our skin, like hyaluronic acid and different uh, chemicals that actually make up collagen in our skin, but a little test you can do is uh, you can pinch your, your face, and if you notice it doesn't bounce back really quickly, uh, that means you are dehydrated. Uh, if it does snap back quickly, like, you know, you pinch it and you, you, you see it just fills in really quick again, that means you are hydrated. So if you are, if you do pinch your skin, it does take a little time for it to come back uh, of your skin. That means you are definitely dehydrated. Just a little tip you should understand. Here's one big thing. I didn't want to show it to you. Uh, it's not really appetizing to show you urine, uh, but if you can imagine dark apple juice, or you can imagine when you get up in the morning and you urinate and it's really, really dark, 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 orangish yellow, uh, that means you are dehydrated. And we're generally going to have 
a darker urine uh, in the morning. But throughout the day, uh, that urine should be like number two. It should be light. It should be really, really light. And if you notice during the day that your urine is uh, not really light in color, that means you're dehydrated. That's one of the key factors and really a simple factor to determine if you're hydrated or not is by looking at the urine. Uh, this guy uh, is, doesn't look too happy. He's obviously hungry, uh, but we sometimes get mixed up with hunger and thirst. Uh, it is proven that if we drink more throughout the day, we will not be as hungry. One of the key elements in weight loss in many different institutions is drinking more fluids because fluids do not have any calories. But in the aspect of this, the body can get very confused at times to say that, okay, I just ate a meal and I feel as if I'm hungry again. Well, guess what? You, you're probably dehydrated. So try drinking fluids, try drinking waters, uh, a lot of water, and you, you'll notice your hunger will probably end up going away. Now, what does this tell you? Well, pretty, pretty easy to figure this one out. Uh, this is bad breath. Now, obviously, when you have bad breath, I can tell you your intestines are not working correctly. I can tell you that uh, you are definitely dehydrated because what happens is saliva, Normally, it's secreted by the salivary glands, and uh, when our body is not secreting enough saliva, uh, this will cause a leading overgrowth of bacteria in our mouth because saliva not only helps like uh, cavities, pre prevents cavities and decay because the saliva has antibacterial properties, and obviously, when you have dehydration, this prevents the production of saliva, leading to this overgrowth of bacteria, which can cause and which will cause bad breath more commonly in babies and elderly, but even uh, some diabetics, uh, even if you are dehydrated, you are not spending a lot of time uh, in hot weather, maybe not eating or, or even drinking regularly enough throughout the day, and you'll notice the breath will get worse. So instead of you just covering it up with a mint or chewing gum, drink more fluid. It will make a big difference. Uh, this poor lady um, shows symptoms of dizziness. Well, obviously, when you are dehydrated, it increases your heart rate. It causes a sudden change in blood pressure. Many times it will drop, particularly when you stand. Uh, you kind of get that dropping of blood pressure coming away from the brain. And this is a high indication of dehydration. Uh, and you'll notice that if you're changing positions a lot, you kind of get that, that change in blood pressure, very common from a lack of uh, hydration in the blood. Remember that uh, the blood is composed of primary fluids of water. And you must ne you need that water for many, many reasons. Uh, this guy right here doesn't look too happy either. This is called uh, constipation. The mo one of the most common problems of digestive problems uh, that we see worldwide because of lack of fluid. And I can tell you dehydration will lead to other problems like hemorrhoids, uh, pushing something out that can't come out. It will lead to stasis. It will lead to auto intoxication when the food starts to uh, becomes necrotic and the bacteria starts eating away in that food and those poisons and toxins makes its way into the bloodstream and it affects your immune system causing potential autoimmune diseases. Uh, so uh, if you are dehydrated, the first thing I will tell you to do, I'm sorry, if you are constipated, the first thing I'm going to tell you to do is hydrate. Carry bottles around of water wherever you are. Start hard hydrating even if you're not thirsty. That's very important because thirst is not always the primary indicator uh, that you are dehydrated. Last but not least, are the old headaches really common? This is where people will go to the ibuprofen and naproxen or the aspirin and say, okay, I got a headache. Uh, before next time you take that medicine or that drug, you know, where you want to maybe try to fight with your liver, or your kidney, or just have a reaction somewhere along the line, maybe your gastrointestinal tract, you're going to maybe inflame your stomach, start drinking a little more water and see if that takes care of the headache. That's my best advice for you. Remember that um, a lot of headaches can come from uh, auto intoxication. When you have uh, constipation, they do work hand in hand together. But understand uh, when we're talking about uh, dehydration, we're talking about you know, our body needing more fluids, Understand that the majority of like kidney stones, uh, uh, conditions uh, that take place, like uh, 
in the body from dehydration. Now, kidney scones is definitely a big leader uh, in this. And there's one other one I wanted to mention that kind of slipped my mind here. Uh, urinary tract infections. When I tell you dehydration and urinary tract infections, it's like hand in hand. Uh, that's why a lot of urologists, even your medical doctors will tell you drink lots of fluids. Why? Because your urethra in a female is so long. Okay? The urethra in a male is so long. So obviously, the, the people don't know this, but the shorter the urethra is, the more apt bacteria can come in from the outside and get through to it. So when you urinate a lot, you are flushing the bacteria that's trying to make its way from the external part to the internal part, trying to get up through the urethra into the urinary, uh, into the bladder. And from the bladder, it can make its way up the ureters on both sides and make its way up to the kidney. But... If you flush it out, females, uh, because your urethra, you probably didn't know this, is much smaller than the male urethra, that's why it's more common to see urinary tract infections. All right? So we learned a little something extra today. That's as good. It's always good. Uh, so if you like these videos, and I, I really hope you do, because this is really important stuff, I ask you to subscribe if you haven't. Uh, share these videos. This is really uh, one of my favorites because it's so practical, it's so easy, and it really helps millions of people because we, we have the tool. The tool is right near us wherever we are worldwide. It's water. We are composed of a significant amount of water. But there's one thing I need to share with you. I'm glad I just remembered before I end up here. The water intake here. Uh, generally, you're asking how much water you should drink, and it's generally half the amount of ounces of your weight. That is typically the standard. Now, people may argue with me, well, that's not true. We don't need that much, or that's too little or too much. I'm telling you the standards. This is a good chart to go by, and I think that if you go by this chart, you are going to do very, very well. Okay, you can see 72.8% of our body is made up of water. Check me out, motivational.com on Facebook. See my hundreds of videos, self-help videos on my channel. Uh, I have, as far as I'm concerned, the best videos when it comes down to posture, musculoskeletal problems, and self-help ways that you can help yourself get well with no money and no doctors. Obviously, there's a lot of people uh, I, I cater to uh, worldwide who do not, who does not have the best medical treatment around or financially have a hard time going to doctors. So uh, the, the, the emails... And the reviews, particularly on my Facebook motivational doc, have been so beautiful, and I thank you for them. And anything I can do, that's why we're here together. Anyways, uh, many blessings to you and your family. I want to thank our chatters for being in the chat room, and I really hope that this video comes in handy for you, your loved ones, your friends, and your family. May God continue to bless you, and we'll be back with you on our next video. Bye-bye.